Matt Smith, I'm with Family First Life. I'm going to talk to you about clients that already have coverage in place. First, we're going to talk about work coverage, which it's important to flush out in the beginning when you're talking to them through financial inventory. So when you ask the golden question, do you have anything that acts like life insurance to offset your mortgage, you want to first start and, and identify if they have any work coverage. Number one, with, with work coverage, what I tell people is if they do have it, I say, listen, depending on your state, above 50000 you're going to have to pay income tax on that benefit when you die. I think that's an important aspect to, to reach out on. As well as that, you know, you can talk about, hey, currently you're 45 years old. Are you planning on dying in the next 20 years? And they'll say, why do you say that? Well, because when you retire, you don't own the coverage, so you can't take it with you. So work coverage is great while you're working, but when you retire, you're going to still need insurance. Does that make sense? Yes, and then as a third level, I say, listen, more importantly, I sit with clients every single day because of maybe a heart condition that they weren't aware of, maybe cancer treatment, or certain health scenarios that they wish they could have private coverage. They lost their job, they didn't own their work coverage, so now they don't have any life insurance or mortgage protection to pay off their home or help their family when they die. So can you see why work coverage does not make sense to rely on? You know you already had it when you filled out the form. It's great to have because it's you know inexpensive, but it's not something I would ever rely on for my family. Does it make sense why we need to look at getting you a mortgage protection plan, John and Mary? Yes, so generally speaking, when you flush out work coverage up front, it won't be the objection that you get on the back end. So the key is, with work coverage, if they do bring it back up and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to check with my work about this. That's where you really need to go back to them and challenge them in regards to, listen, we already spoke about how work coverage is, is it's a good idea because generally it's free or it's very inexpensive, but you get what you pay for. You don't own it. You need to have some private coverage in place because these are private bills, right? So the, the next thing I would say is, have you you know, if you have anything that acts like life insurance, do you currently have life insurance in regards to private coverage? A couple key scenarios here. You need to say, can you please go grab me a statement? And, and make sure that you're very bold about it because they need to get out the statement because generally speaking, nine out of 10 times clients don't know what they own, which is extremely important. And your whole idea with work cover or with private coverage is you're trying to take the premium that they're currently paying and you want to reallocate it to your premium on your new coverage. So what, what's important to do is you want to go apples versus oranges. So if you meet with a client that has a term product uh, that they bought you know, 12 years ago, it's a 20 year term, they have eight years left, they spend $150 a month on a $250,000 policy, they're currently 52 years old, you want to ask them questions like, do you have fam what's your family history like? Did your parents live past 70, 80 years old? Generally speaking, yes, they did. Okay, so when I'm trying to sell a permanent plan, I'm going to use this stat with LIMRA, which is Life Insurance Marketing Resource Association. Only 2% of term pays out. You know, you're currently getting at the age where you don't need to take out something that is going to pay if you die you need to take something out when you die because the only type of life insurance that matters is one that pays upon your death. Would you agree? Yes, so the key is adding value, talking about family history, and going apples versus oranges. Now, if I'm going to maybe extend the term further because they need more coverage, I'm not going to bring up that stat. And I'm going to say, listen, you still need a lot of coverage because you just took out the mortgage you owe as much as you do on the house. It's important to have as much insurance as possible right now. And we need to lock in your health and age another 20 or 30 years. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this extra $150 a month. We're going to put it to, towards a new policy, extend out your term. You know, maybe it's a cash back option. Maybe it's just a better value pitch. But you, what, what the idea is, it's always apples versus oranges. And it's critical for you to get the statement out if you're running during the day, especially with like final expense appointments, etc., a lot of times I'll call the carrier if they don't have the statement because you can just ask them who they have on their bank account. You can call the carrier. You can ask them if the payments go up. You can ask if the death benefit goes away or if, if the death benefit decreases. A lot of time with work coverage, 
as well if people like retire with work coverage those coverages will expire or go up or decrease so uh, I can use multiple examples where I've been with clients where I have them call and they're not aware because they're like hey I own this private you know fifty thousand dollar plan when I retired it never ends well then you call and you find out well yeah it never ends but it drops down from fifty to five thousand once you hit age eighty so if, if you're not aware you're gonna create a lot of value and a lot of need by covering these these people that already have coverage in place so address it move on build value and I think you'll find a lot of success when you when you address this up front in the financial inventory thank you very much